Hello there. It's been a while since I've done a product review, but today I'm going to look at this Vivo 6 inch rotary table. Now, what do you say about a rotary table? I turned the handle and it went round. Well, we can probably say a bit more than that. Let's have a look. You know, people often tease me because I talk about money, but to me it's very important what things cost. So for this, £115 UK delivered, and by currency conversion, 157 US dollars, 133 euros. And what's this got to do with it? Well, nothing at all. It's just a trailer for a different video I'm working on. This is a new screw for my Clarkson tool and cutter grinder, Mark 1. There's the old screw. And I'm just taking out the backlash, but it looks like I need a new nut as well. This bit of bronze isn't quite the right size, but it's going to do because I ain't going to buy another one. But that's in a different video. Let's get this open. Do you ever watch those reviews where the box opening is almost the biggest thing? Well, not in this one. Instructions, sometimes useful. I was trying to be clever, but I fumbled the polystyrene, so I had to fight with it a bit. Anyway, that's it. Let's get that out. It's quite heavy. I don't know exactly what, but it is quite heavy. So in addition to the unit, you've got a handle and you've got various hold down screws and bolts and an Allen key. Let's unwrap it. You know, as a videoer, the worst thing you can do is describe what you're doing. I am now taking off the polar thing. Yes, I know, I can see that. That's it. So in the bag, two hold down bolts. They do fit my mill, I'll show you in a minute. And then we've got keys for the bottom. Two for there, two for the back side. So there's four with the screws. Usual problems with these things. Handles are loose and a bit sloppy. That one won't lock, so that's going to need a washer or something underneath it. But I suppose, no, I suppose if I took that out and turned it one more turn, so I guess that's the danger of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Locking the handles in. You might have to turn it to adjust it. If you let it stick out, actually it's fine. Okay, I'll give them that one, but it is quite wobbly. This one comes out quite loose. This was very, very tight just now, but if you release that, move that, this moves free when that's unlocked. And then you can move it back again, engage the gear, lock that, then it turns with a handle. And it's a 90 to one, so that's four degrees per turn. So it's 3, 30, 0, 30, 1, 1, 30, 2, etc. Obviously. In the centre, Morse Taper 2. Now I don't have much Morse Taper 2 tooling, but we can drop that in it. And if we leave that on, you can see it going round. Okay. Um, I'm assuming that you can knock that out from the back. Yes, you can. There's a bit of a bit of a bit chopped out there. Yeah, sort of fairly typical of these things, but it's okay. It's a nice flat looking base. It's measured off in degrees around the outside, which is I suppose what you would expect. And there's a vernier on it as well. So I'll, I'll just zoom into that so you can see. The dial is very clear and there's the vernier. There's an indicator which is adjustable side to side by a lot actually. Look at it. It's pretty solid. Sometimes they make them of like um, stamped out brass and they're not very strong, but this one's strong enough. There's an end float adjuster with that key. Tighten on the screw, lock it up, take out any end float that way. There's a couple of holes there, which I guess are to fit keys. To turn it. 
I can't get this key into this slot here. And I think they've used a bit of filler here where you've had a cavity, which is fine, it doesn't matter, not at this price really. But some of that filler spilled over, so you'd have to do some work on this to get that to sit in there. You can adjust the backlash on the worm actually with this because the way that it disengages is on an eccentric, so it's free to spin there. As you close it again, if you push it all the way, you've taken out the backlash, but if you move it back a little bit, look, you'll see backlash now. Now you never get all the backlash out anyway. I mean, if you've got a rotary table or a dividing head, there's always some amount of backlash just for it to work properly. So you just need to make sure that you're always turning in the same direction and then you lock it once you've turned. Now I'm going to take this off because you can get dividing plates for some of these and I want to see if the dividing plates that I got with my Vivo dividing head will fit. There's nothing to say that they will fit. I'm just going to take it off and have a look. The manual, by the way, isn't very good. And when you look at this diagram and you see the numbers, it's quite blurred. So you can't even read some of this stuff. And it refers to things like section AB, and I can't even find section AB. But if you take, get it on your phone or something, it's quite readable there. It's not blurred. It's clear enough. Now included in the manual, there are various tables for the dividing plates if you have them. So I think that's the set that would be appropriate to this, but let's get this off. Now I'm doing this live for the first time, so honestly anything could go wrong. I'm just discovering as you are. We're doing this together. That's on a key and I can't get it off. Hold on. <laughs> We're getting there, I think. It is coming. Maybe there should be a, <laughs> an easier way of getting this off. Maybe it's not supposed to come off. There we are. And I also loosened that collar there. There's a little screw there. Okay. Well, then we've got something going on here. The heck is that? There's the key. So the manual is showing these plates as an option and then we've got two rotary table sizes DP1, DP2 and for the DP1 size the internal hole of the indexing plate is 21 millimeters and when, when I measure off here yes I've got 21 millimeters and if I take a plate out of the Vivo dividing head I've got well that's 21 millimeters so it would basically go on there now I don't see any screw holes for anything, but this is fixed anyway, so that wouldn't be turning. I'm sure I could make something to fit, and that might be a nice little project for me. But otherwise, it does look as if these don't go on directly. The manual's a bit um, unclear about it. Oh, looky look here. Put the knives on. Oh, yes. Put the spring on. Well, not quite. How does a spring go? Not like that, obviously. I'll work something out. Somewhere there. Handle goes on. Oh, how does a handle go on? Not like that, obviously. Needs a bit of work, but we're nearly there with it. Yeah, this fitting and this fitting are almost the same. Now, there's a bit of a difference in the spacing between there and there so with a spacer or something then this clip would fit okay and then this has two flats on here for this handle to engage I'd need to probably make another one of these for this one and lock it to this and then we're done good fitting the handle one thing I've noticed with the screw in to there, if I clamp that right up, this would stick out of the back. But as I do screw that in, what I find is it gets to a certain point close to the back and then it binds. So, you know, was it their intention 
that you have this kind of idea. I don't know. I might want to change that a bit. That's now gone tight, you see. Was that what they intended? No way of knowing. Hmm. Let's put it on the mill and see what it looks like for size. When you've only got a small mill, height is quite important. Now because of this kind of gooseneck on this head, this mill's got quite a bit of height. But this table is right down to the bottom at the moment. I've put in a fairly long cutter and it's a Clarkson holder which is quite long as well. But with the table right down you can see I've only got that left. Now I made a sort of rotary stand for myself and it's got an L00 fitting on it and that means I can take chucks from the lathe, drop them straight on. But straight away you see the problem for me, I've run out of height. It's great on my big pillar drill but not on this, on, on the mill. So this is quite low profile which is quite useful and it's only uh, well it's 150 millimeters not six inches so it's slightly under six inches but the profile of it is quite good not too high is what I'm saying I haven't bolted it down that's why it's moving but that looks pretty good to me in proportion I'm talking about now if we stand it on this end here I want to look at the center height because I've got uh, I've got a tailstock for the, the Vivar dividing head and I wondered if it would work with this. I'm not saying it should, I'll, I'm just going to have a look and see if it would. What do you reckon? Four inches? 100 millimetres. We're in luck. There you go. What is that about, honestly? That would annoy me. Now the thing about having a 90 to 1 rotary table is it gives me an extra capability because my dividing head is 40 to 1 and with a 90 to 1 you could cut a 63 tooth gear and if you know this 63 tooth is the conversion gear to take a metric lathe to an imperial lathe for screw cutting I'm talking about. Now I have a 63 tooth gear but for me that's always the test. So it's can't remember exactly what it is but it works out in sevenths so if you have a dividing plate which is um, multiples of seven so obviously 21 28 then with it fitted you'd be able to index for a 63 tooth gear you could bolt something to here you could put something in the mass taper 2 using this put your gear on there horizontal mill cut your gear could be done so what do we think? Well I quite like it as a table made to a price. I think just as a rotary table this part here is really good and I think well finished and it, I'll put it to good use. Some of the fittings are a bit rough around the edges as you saw and I really don't know what that's all about. Um, I will almost certainly put indexing plates on it and there may be an easy way to do it that I've overlooked that you will tell me about but it'll be a nice little side project. So I'll put a discount link in the description. Think about it. If you want one, you get a little bit of money off. Thanks for watching.